bush. Dress us up. Right here. We got them on tape. That's in that spell over his Oh! <laughs> Everything they, you, I, I, don't, I don't owe you this comment. I know, I appreciate you, 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 you have, you, this is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank have you, you ever and goodbye. Been the ritual? That's none of your damn business. Oh, that's right. Our story begins in Northern California over a hundred years ago when locals began to spread rumors of bizarre occult rituals being conducted in the ancient redwood groves of Sonoma County. As the decades passed, it became clear. These incredible stories had a basis in truth, and their source was a 2,700-acre private club known as the Bohemian Grove. Then in a time period between the mid-1970s and the early 1990s, scores of reporters attempted to infiltrate the Grove. All attempts were unsuccessful. Grove security identified them, threw them out for trespassing, or in some cases, had the local police arrest them. To many, it seemed, the Grove's secrets would never become public. All of that changed on July 15th, 2000, when we ripped aside the veil of secrecy and were successfully able to penetrate the Bohemian Grove on their high holy day and videotape the cremation of care ritual. Our infiltration is chronicled in my documentary film, Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove. A British documentary film company, World of Wonder, also covered our investigation. In the weeks that followed, Alex streamed his footage on his website and released it as a sell-through video. Everywhere I looked, the internet was aflame with news of the daring raid. As the news spread across the planet that the Bohemian Grove had been blown wide open and that their secrets were public, the people were amazed. They were amazed to learn that many US presidents and British prime ministers, German chancellors, the Hollywood elite, the heads of business and academia, Federal Reserve chairmen were traveling to the Grove each year, and that presidents had been going there since the turn of the last century in 1900. They were shocked by each new revelation of ritualistic depravity. This film is about what we've learned in the five years since we infiltrated the Grove. <laughs> And it's about the response that we've gotten from Grove members, the press, and even local activists in the area who've been protesting the Grove for over 25 years. Finally, we learn that the Grove was only one chapter in a larger, worldwide secret society hell-bent on bringing in a one-world government. What would the people do if they knew that the majority of the leaders in the corporate world as well as government or deep occultists. Before the year 2000 and our successful penetration of the Grove, the mainstream media denied that rituals were indeed taking place there and said that elite from all over the world were simply meeting in secret to have a good time. After the footage we had shot of the cremation of care ritual aired first in England and then in the United States on national TV, the mainstream media changed their tune. The San Francisco Chronicle had previously refused to report on the Grove. After our infiltration, they wrote as many as five articles a year detailing the bizarre activities that were taking place inside the Grove, including the fact that top presidential advisor Karl Rove had tapped Arnold Schwarzenegger inside the Grove to run for governor on California's recall ballot. Even the vaunted New York Times reported on the Bohemian Grove, but attacked us for sneaking in. The New York Post was one of many national publications to report on all of the homosexual activities going on at the Grove. The Post reported in its page six gossip column that Chad Savage, gay porno star, was quote, servicing the moguls at the Grove. But a disturbing theme ran through the body of the reportage. 
Okay, it's true. The elite meet behind closed doors, and there's gay porn stars and gay prostitutes being shipped in like beluga caviar. What's the big deal? Let's just let them have their privacy. And so they have lakeside chats calling for world government. Really, they're not bad people. The people we should watch are those that are exposing it. They're really dangerous weirdos. Of all the hit pieces that we've been victims of, the worst was conducted on national television by Brian Lamb, the director of C-SPAN, and some shifty-eyed professor they dug up who appeared to be flashing Masonic hand signs while he tried to eviscerate our character by implying that there wasn't even a ritual at all. Why, Alex Jones claims they do this ritual. Meanwhile, the Bohemian Grove has gone public to the newspapers admitting they conduct rituals. They, the, overnight, they had a, a gentleman on by the name of Alex Jones who has a, a talk show in Texas, I think, and it's heard in communities around the United States. And he was talking about the Bohemian Grove Club as if that's where it all happens. That's where all the decisions are made. There are thousands of people go there and there's some kind of a ceremony surrounding an owl and all that. Have you followed this at all? Yes, I, I have, even though the show is on past my bedtime. But uh, Alex Jones has been talking about this for, uh, for quite a while. The Bohemian Grove, of course, is a privately owned Redwood Grove up in Sonoma County, north of San Francisco, where every summer there is a get-together of uh, uh, the wealthy and, uh, and well-placed, all, uh, all male, uh, who uh, get together for general cavorting, socializing, lectures, symposia, and so on in an atmosphere that is completely removed from public scrutiny. Uh, Alex Jones and some others have uh, suggested for a long time that there are all sorts of nefarious rituals that go on. Human sacrifices that were uh, being committed by the elite who uh, attend these gatherings. A lot of things people feel are organized behind the scenes with the Bilderbergers, the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, the, Mas the Masons, you can keep going down the list, and you, the Illuminati, One World Government, New World Order, Skull and Bones. You've got more information on that than I do, so call us at the top of the hour and talk to our guests about that, and we'll try to sort it out. Define Illuminati. The Illuminati were a small uh, quasi-Masonic group founded in Central Europe in 1776. There was a surprising development in the summer of 2005. A Bohemian Grove employee decided to videotape some of the activities in the Grove and to give us the footage. The footage you're seeing was shot on a tiny digital camera, so the quality isn't the best, but the images are powerful. The individual that gave us this footage asked that we not release their name. Our source was able to confirm what we had seen in internal Bohemian Grove documents and annals, that the elite of the elite attend the Grove. Our source personally saw New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson in attendance, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, the famous newsman Walter Cronkite, and countless other luminaries. Without giving away the identity of our source, we can tell you this. The most elite encampment within the Grove is Mandalay. Other members of the Grove were not even allowed to approach within a hundred yards of this compound. Swarming with secret service, valets, private French cooks, and private security men. In the compartmentalized system of the New World Order, Mandalay is an elite within an elite at the very top of the pyramid's capstone. Things have changed in the last few years at the all-male encampment. Since its founding in 1872, no females have been allowed in. But under pressure, they've allowed women some jobs in parking cars and in the kitchens in special cloistered areas. Our source is male. We'll call him Kyle. He reported to us that it was a constant irritant inside the grove being asked by old men if he, quote, slept around and wanted to have some fun. During one of the festival's revelries, known as Gypsy Jazz, they paused to thank the author of the music. 
They talk about what a wonderful jazz player he was, but that sometimes he did hang around with women, and the crowd boos with disgust. He disappeared from time to time, often with women. <laughs> He thought stealing was fun. The Grove's own internal annals brag that the Manhattan Project, or the plan to create the A-bomb, was hatched inside this building known as the Chalet. The Strategic Defense Initiative, better known as Star Wars, was also the brainchild of Grove members and was born inside the Chalet. Cold War. Top Soviet dignitaries traveled to the Bohemian Grove for secret meetings with the heads of the U.S. government as well as corporate leaders. Our source worked at the Grove in the summer of 2004 and the summer of 2005, and he was able to obtain two program covers for the cremation of care ceremony as well as a 2005 membership list, which reads like a who's who of U.S. and European elite. Former President Jimmy Carter, former President George Herbert Walker Bush, President Bush, Henry Kissinger, George Shultz, the list goes on and on. This is a video still of the sign at the entrance to the path to the Hillbilly Club where President Bush stays. Look at that happy little devil with his forked tail dancing and smiling and those sharp little teeth. Oh, it's so Christian. But again, President Bush had such a Christian name in Skull and Bones, Magog or Satan's war leader. The Grove is dominated by Republicans, the supposed party of Christian conservative family values. But the Grove has its share of high-powered Democrats as well. It's also important to note that the Grove itself was founded in 1872 by West Coast journalists and that the National Press Club adopted the iconography of the Grove for its great seal. There are three major icons used in the cremation of care ritual. Moloch, the owl idol, the curved staff carried by the high priest, and the eternal flame lamp, the Arabian style lamp which the priest uses to ignite his torch, which he then uses to burn the human effigy care. Here are video stills of the effigy after it has been burned on the altar in the morning. Many researchers of the global elite believe that real sacrifices are going on at the Grove. When I filmed the ceremony in 2000, I saw no evidence of this. It looked like an effigy, and the druid priests were easily able to pick it up and take it up the steps to the platform. Our inside source informs us that there are actually four effigies used in the ceremony. One brought in on the back of the wagon, another that's used behind the trees, another that's brought across by the grim reaper to the steps of the idol, and still another effigy that is placed on a black altar before Moloch, the demon god, and burned. And this is the first and only time that video has ever been shot inside of the owl idol. We can now confirm that the owl is metal with a stone facing. Leaning up against a wall is the metal skeletal remains of care. Care, or the conscience of the group, is symbolized by a human body. All that remains is the metal skeleton. Our source informs us that the final effigy that is burned is made of a highly flammable material and that the local fire department from Monterio oversees this part of the ritual. That was an important piece of the puzzle because in 2003, we traveled back to the Grove and talked to a lot of the locals who were mainly friendly. But when we talked to a couple of local firefighters who were with the Monterio Fire Department and asked them about the Bohemian Grove, they got very upset and told us to turn our cameras off. Well, he was telling me about 
about, you know, it's, it's like we're on the president goes and stuff. And so we were going to, like, talk to him, and then he's all alone. Hey, man, shut the camera off, huh? More hidden video reveals some of the ritualistic cloaks worn in the ceremonies. Here are some more stills inside the grove. Our social lives, going to the football game or the PTA, a little bit different than your average world leader or corporation chief. No, in their spare time, they worship Molik and do mock human sacrifices. We just need to get used to that and accept them as our leaders. Think about it. If your neighbor was engaging in mock human sacrifices to Molik, the demon idol that was worshipped all over the Mediterranean and the Middle East, would you let that neighbor walk your dog or house sit or how about babysit your children or be in control of the nuclear launch codes? Well, let me give you a revelation. They are in control of the national deficit, of Congress, of your bank account, of your local police department, and they see you as cattle, as their slaves. Some of the criticism we received came from an unexpected source. Harry Shearer, star of Spinal Tap and the voice of Mr. Burns on The Simpsons. This is a get-together of very powerful guys. Harry Shearer played the role of apologist in a British documentary about the Grove. Mr. Shearer, who is also a member of the Grove, said that they're just having fun when they have the cremation of care ritual and that it's a men's party where they blow off steam. But Mr. Shearer didn't stop there. In 2002, he produced a full-length feature film and released it titled The Teddy Bear's Picnic. Mr. Shearer has told the press that his film is based on the Bohemian Grove. The Owl of Bohemia is turned into a pelican. Care is transformed into time. The juridic rites are interpreted to simply be nonsensical sophomoric activities. Oh, and guess what the plot of the entire film is? That they're trying to keep their rituals secret, and two employees have hidden video cameras and are about to blow their secret wide open. I wonder who they could be talking about. And I want to make an announcement for everyone, anyone who is parked across the street, anyone who's parked across the street at the theater, on the theater grounds, you need to move your car. Hey, hey! Ho, ho! This rich man's camp has got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! This rich man's camp has got to go! Hey, hey! This rich man's camp has got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! This rich man's camp has got to go! Hey, hey! Ho, ho! So, uh, are you one of the uh, Grovers? I'm just here. One of the strangest chapters in the unfolding Bohemian Grove soap opera was the fact that local protesters were angry at us bringing up the occult activities in the Grove. They said that we should only spend our time focusing on the political decisions that were made in the Grove. I think it's bad enough to just stick with what they're doing to the Globe. Local peace activist Mary Moore had been protesting the Grove for more than two decades. When Mary saw our documentary and heard our take on what we witnessed inside, she went unglued, calling us all sorts of names. We were wacko for thinking these rituals were strange. Why were we reporting on that? 
For the 2001 protest, a year after we snuck in, Mary turned over control of the organization to other local groups, but she was in attendance. We then caught footage of the local leaders of the protest group actually carrying out their own counter rituals in some type of bizarre white magic versus black magic war. They even had the old fashioned witch's pot. I was wondering where the brooms were. They conjured spirits, brought them into the circle, concentrated their power together, and then sent the spell in against the Grovers. Guardians of the Watchtowers of the East, Spirit, Spirits of Air, Spirits of Changing Winds, Winds of Change, be present here as we do this ritual. So mote it be. I call upon the front primal fires of transformation and creation, the shining face of the Father and the molten core of the Mother. In their sacred union, we stand. Sacred fires even now. Oh, oh, oh. <coughs> oh spirits of the water, spirits of this beautiful river that runs past us. We feel you in our blood, moving through our bodies. Let us welcome you as we remember that we are one. Oh, spirits of the water. Oh, oh spirits of the water. May we not fear the dark place that we enter in order to learn from you, Mother Earth. Guardians of the North, be with us. So more to This went on for literally hour after hour after hour. There's a little spell that we've been working since the election. 
You mean the appointment. <coughs> That's right. Maybe you'll say it after me. It goes like this. Let power and resources flow. Let power and resources flow. To those who'll use them. To those who'll use them. For the good of the earth and her people. For the good of the earth and her people. And be withdrawn from those who won't. And be withdrawn from those who won't. Then a veteran warlock asked one of the spirits to stay and give Grove members a welcome as they drove in in their luxury automobiles. Winds of change, spirits of the air, powers of the east. We have felt your presence here and would like for you to stick around and give a warm welcome to the folks who are coming here. But go if you must, and please stay if you will. Hail and farewell. Hail and farewell. Does it feel good to get loaded on the slave ships, giggling happily, <laughs> face scanning cameras going up, you don't speak out against that? In that cauldron is water from sacred places and from political actions all around the world. There's water there from Seattle and from Quebec City and Chaliswell and, and other places people know of. The birthplace of uh, Quetzalcoatl and Amatlan. And I'm going to take some of it actually tomorrow to Genoa to the protest there against the G8. And we're going to do some kind of cauldron ritual in the midst of it, which will be interesting. Now I'm beginning to realize why we're not supposed to talk about all the occult activities that are going on inside the grove. It isn't magic or belief in magic that's the problem. It's not the occult. No, it's those evil right-wingers. And by the way, let's not mention all those top Democrats that are inside. It's pretty hypocritical. Now to be fair, Mary Moore and many of the protesters were not involved in the ritual. But we did see leaders of the ritual directing the protest and moderating with police. The police even shut down the road so they could carry out their ritual. And to be fair, it wasn't just Western magic that was being practiced at the protest. There was a group there promoting Santeria. You know, that Caribbean voodoo practice. But they also mixed in some Aztec worship. So it was quite a grab bag of occultism. What is the purpose of the offering for the altar? What is that? Giving back. Giving back to mother. Giving back to the earth. We just take, take, take and consume. But today, we're asking everybody to give something back. So this is uh, to return something to the earth, right? Yes. yes. Na yeah. Since by doing so, we resurrect care. Oh, okay. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Our investigator talked to a local NPR reporter who had had an interesting run-in with what we later learned was the Secret Service. Cool. I was alerted to very fancy cars standing in the uh, side street here, and I walked up. The guy had his window down, and he had all kinds of fancy recording equipment on his seat next to him. And I held the microphone, and then I said, Sir, we are curious about who you are. Would you please tell us who you are? And he said, take your mic out of my car, lady, and step back. And I said, would you repeat that for broadcast and held it even closer? And that's all I could get out of him. And then he sort of tried to run over my toe. He turned his car around and disappeared in that direction. And people said he was on the bridge filming before. So he was somebody 
from the other side who was documenting this. Right, the wrong side. Okay. The wrong side, yes. <laughs> in studying worldwide occult networks, in modern times and throughout history, we always run into the same data. Compartmentalized pyramidal structures with a bunch of well-meaning dupes at the bottom, managers in the central areas, and Luciferian death cult adherents at the top. In India, it is Kali. The Mayans and Aztecs' greatest gods were the gods of death. It was the same in Egypt and in Babylon, as well as Rome and ancient Greece. But what about those sweet little Hawaiians? Ah, you guessed it, throwing virgins into that live volcano. The god of death demands it, so the rest of us can live. The Druids would bash their children's brains out and kick them into a peat bog. Noblemen would willingly give themselves up to the Druidic priest to have their throats slit before they were thrown into fiery pits known as bonfires today. Don't forget the European tradition of the burning man. Take your strongest man when times get tough, strap him into a huge wicker effigy of a human and torch him. That will make the gods bring back the fertility. That will make the gods bring life to the tribe. Death brings life. They call it creative destruction, but in reality, it is simply a tool of the elite to abuse, subjugate, and dominate their populations for their own good. We're looking at ancient propaganda. In the fall of 2004, while in New York to cover the Republican National Convention, we ran into David Gergen, the Karl Rove of four presidential administrations. Okay, one last question. I read a Washington Times article many years ago where you had a comment about the organization, and then now it's been in the Wall Street Journal, it's been in a lot of different newspapers, and that's the Bohemian Grove. And back in, what was it, 19... Uh, 96 when you joined uh, as a Clinton advisor they were the Republicans were criticizing you oh what about Bohemian Grove and then you counter uh, and then you countered them by saying hey I don't run around in the woods naked what did that mean here is the before mentioned Washington Times article where he said I didn't run around naked like they do I, I don't I don't know what I don't know what quote you're referring to I'm not aware of any quote like that uh, listen uh, I am a uh, uh, a happy member of the Bohemian Grove. I like the, uh, the folks who come there, and uh, it's really inappropriate for me to uh, talk about a uh, uh, the group beyond that. Thank you. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's uh, that. Uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open and got the video. It's been on national TV. Well, I disrespect you for that. You do? I do. But it's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't took, we deserve to know? You, you took an under, I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? But you, we have public officials. You, there, I'm so sorry. You took an understanding when you went in there that you would not do that film. And you did, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there too, doesn't it? No, they put them yes, up sir. after. Oh, I'm I sorry. Just walked in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what I want the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was not that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> Sir, everything uh, you, I, I, don't, I don't owe you this comment. I know. I appreciate you, 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 you have you. This is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank have you, you ever and goodbye. Been in the ritual? It's none of your damn business. Oh, that's right. Listen, oh. listen. You go around and and make understandings with people and violate them. You, you ambush people on the streets, and that's, that's inappropriate form of journalism. If you wish to practice that, that's fine. But don't ask others to respect you for it. If you want to, you, you can do it. You're free American, like anything you want. If you want to be uncivil and rude and ungentlemanly, that's up to you. But don't expect the rest well, of us to say, oh, well, you're there, one. Mr. Gergen. I'm sorry. Nobody sets policy in there. We try to be gentlemen, and obviously, you don't belong there. Weaving spiders coming out here? <laughs> yeah, that is a three pointer. Woo! Look how strangely he behaved when we brought it up. Why is he acting so secretive? And why did he get so angry when he discovered that we'd snuck in? You see, they take it very, very seriously. 
This is one of the hallmarks of the occult and secret societies. The word occult means secret. Secrecy is part of their religion. They revel in it, and when it's violated, they become extremely angry. How widespread is the occult? The answer is extremely widespread. Occultism in our society, and particularly in our government, at the highest levels of corporate America, is rampant. It is a well-publicized fact that the Reagans had every aspect of their lives governed by their astrologer. Imagine having your life controlled down to the exact minute that you give a speech by astrology, an ancient occult system that believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. Eleanor Roosevelt admitted that she performed seances and tried to raise the dead at the White House. Sixty years later, Hillary Clinton had her own seances, attempting to contact Eleanor Roosevelt. Prime Minister Tony Blair and his wife practice the occult every morning. Tony Blair draws a circle and then conjures the spirit that he calls the light. He channels it and makes decisions according to what the spirit tells him. The Blair's admitted occult activities are legion, and so was Adolf Hitler's well-known obsession with dark mysticism. Adolf Hitler belonged to the pre-Nazi death cult, the Thule Society, as well as the Thule Society. Both groups trace their lineage back to the Order of Death founded in 1776 in Ingolstadt University in Bavaria, Germany. Then, of course, it spread to the U.S. with the founding of Skull and Bones. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, he's not the nominee. And, uh, but, uh, look, I look for... Are you prepared to lose? No, I'm not going to lose. You both were members of Skull and Bones, a secret society at Yale. What does that tell us? Uh, not much, because it's a secret. <laughs> Is there a secret handshake? Is there a secret code? I wish there were something secret I could manifest. 322, a secret number? Uh, there are all kinds of secrets, Tim, but one thing is not a secret. I disagree with this president's direction. Aleister Crowley, who dubbed himself the Beast and the most evil man alive, was a fellow traveler with some of the most powerful people in British society, including prominent royals. The Church of Satan, the Temple of Set, the OTO, the Golden Dawn, Skull and Bones, Bohemian Grove, the Blue Lodge, the Scottish Rite, the 33rd Degree. It seems like there are hundreds of different occultic groups, but all they are are different denominations in the same religion, the Egyptian and Babylonian Mystery Schools. Albert Pike, who was the supreme grand mason of the entire world, founded the Ku Klux Klan. But you don't hear Jesse Jackson calling for his statue to be removed in Washington, D.C. Why is that? Because Jesse Jackson is a 33rd degree mason. Now don't get me wrong, most masons are what high-level occultists call porch masons or outsiders. They themselves are considered neophytes by those in the inner circle or those nearer the top of the pyramid. They're compartmentalized. They believe that their great work, as they call it, is to help society. But in reality, they're being controlled and manipulated. The Knights of the Secret Circle, the Knights of the Golden Circle, this is what high-level KKK members call themselves. But even low-level KKK members do not understand that the KKK itself is part of a larger Masonic organization. Most Masons detest the Klan, but they've never looked on their own temple walls at the paintings of Albert Pike that adorn them and asked themselves why the founder of the Klan is hanging in their temple. This is the power of hidden in plain view a favorite trick of Luciferians. Where did this dark thinking start, this, this black spirituality? 
The central thread goes back to ancient Egypt and Babylon with the mystery schools. They knew that knowledge is power, and so secret societies were formed to guard the secrets of medicine, architecture, government, agriculture. Secret societies are nothing more than the first intelligence agencies. Knowledge had to be guarded, but over time, elites abused their control of the knowledge and used it to dominate their populations. And the same sciences of control are being used today. That's why the elite today relishes secrecy. They know that it is the fount of their power. They seek to dumb down the population, not just to hoard their secret knowledge to make us even more mindless, more domesticated, like braying sheep to the slaughter. Their religion is the science of sophistry, the science of the con artist, the science of the despot, the dictator, the tyrant, the controller, the charlatan, the liar. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. They are parasites. They are anathema to free, dynamic human societies. Know your enemy. Stand up for love and life and family and resist the New World Order and the Babylonian slave state our enemies are attempting to construct. I want to tell everybody out in TV land how they can come to the Grove, where their elected leaders, along with the big bankers and the heads of media, meet, along with some European royalty, every year to decide how to run the country. You can fly into San Francisco, or you can fly into Santa Rosa, you can even fly into Sacramento, and you know, well, you just drive out uh, to Highway 101, you take uh, Highway 12 out west towards the coast, you took it about 10 miles out from the coast, right outside the little town of Monterio. And the town of Monterio, off the main drag, uh, you'll take the Bohemian Avenue. And it dead ends right here at the 2,700 acre Redwood Grove uh, entrance, where your world leaders, um, among other things, set policy for much of the planet and dress up in black and red robes and worship, uh, well, moly. To purchase additional copies of this film, or to see dozens of other films and important books, be sure and visit InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com. Or to order, simply call toll-free 1-888-253-3139. Hey guys, get your cameras on. Yeah, what's going on? Huh? I've almost been arrested three times every day, anywhere in the city, of, city videotaping anything. It is an absolute nightmare. And we're looking for patriots that know what the Bill of Rights and Constitution says and that can see all of this and know that it's a fraud. Four planes in two hours! How can that be? A cop on 9-11 said that it was going to come down. I don't know how he knew that. On the morning of 9-11, the CIA was running a drill of flying hijacked jets into the World Trade Center and Pentagon. Building 7 is further away from the towers and was not hit by planes. So if your building's owned by Larry Silverstein, it collapses because he's got a big fat insurance policy. And the Project for New American Century said that we need a terrorist attack on the order of Pearl Harbor to get the American people behind a war. Prescott Bush, he did a number of things that were not only anti-American, but were pro-Hitler. A lot of people aren't gonna know what skull of, I don't really know what it is. Why don't you talk about NORAD standing down, Michael? Why not the really hardcore 9 11 issues? Thank you. you ever and goodbye. Been in the ritual? That's none of your damn business.